11.24 a.m. In less than two minutes, a second report came out that the SROs had the suspect at gunpoint and were taking him into custody. Shortly thereafter, emergency medical services were requested and our officers began treating both victims. The victims in this case are both males, one in ninth grade and one in 11th grade. They were treated on scene before being transported to local hospitals as trauma alerts. As of the last report, both victims are in stable condition. The parents of both victims were immediately notified once we identified the victims. I think this is critically important because you have upwards of 15 to 1600 kids here and we wanted to ensure that the media release we d we provided effectively noticed anyone that if they weren't notified their kids were okay the suspect in this case is also a juvenile male in ninth grade he has no discipline history at the school and his motive and relationship to the victims is unknown at this point Florida police detectives are actively working this scene, processing the scene, and interviewing multiple witnesses and the suspect. We're working diligently to identify the appropriate charges and a motive. A critical component of any active assailant response is to neutralize the threat. In this case, it occurred very quickly allowing us to focus on the safety of everyone else within the school. We have protocols we follow in any active assailant type response. In this case, because the threat was neutralized so quickly, we ended up in a situation where we could identify that we didn't have an active assailant taking place. And we were able to, to tailor the response to what we knew we had to do and it was clear the rest of the school. Anytime you have a case of this nature, you have conflicting information, conflicting reports, but fortunately for us, our SROs were, were nearby and were able to intervene. So the big task was clearing the school and working to reunify kids with their parents and families. That can be a challenge when you're dealing with 21 buses and upwards of 15 to 1600 kids. And it's critically important that we get that right and to alleviate those fears and make sure that the kids are safe during that process. We expect to be on scene for several more hours completing the scene work. We have multiple interviews still to do. We're going to review all evidence available to us to include video, uh, the suspect statements to try and, as I said, ascertain the motive for this violent act. Fortunately, the, the, the news we were most recently provided, is, as I said, the victims are in stable condition, which is a positive sign. I'd like to thank Safety Harbor Fire. They were here quickly. Our SROs immediately neutralized the threat and delivered emergency medical care to the victims. Safety Harbor Fire helped with the extractions to the local hospitals quickly to get the treatment that was necessary. A key piece of any kind of response like this is a unified command. We had that very quickly in this instance with Safety Harbor Fire, EMS personnel, Clearwater Fire, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, deputies, and I think that's key to working with the school district, with the school administration, and the folks that are on this campus to come to a successful conclusion and make sure everyone's safe. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent Hendrick, and he can answer school-specific questions. I'll stay here to answer any questions related to the case. I can't get too granular and talk about details that may impact the case. I'm not going to release names of victims or the suspect because they're all juveniles at this point, but I'll, I'll, I'll be able to handle some generic questions related to how this investigation will unfold. Thank you, Chief. I want to first thank the Clearwater Police Department and the school resource officers that work today. Uh, every report that we have is they acted swiftly, appropriately, uh, and with great care for <coughs> our students here at this high school. Uh, as Chief alluded to, uh, school districts and law enforcement practice these drills all the time, and today 
this school did the drill and an implementation exactly how we wanted it to do. Uh, Principal Henderson did a fantastic job. His staff, his teachers, all did tremendous in keeping our students safe and following all of the protocols in terms of reunification and dismissal. This afternoon, I had an opportunity to meet with the faculty uh, and go over what happened here today, uh, assure them that we have support for them, both from physical safety and mental health support. School will be in session tomorrow. We'll have uh, mental health support for our students and our staff, as well as the physical support for the school as we do. Uh, today is a day that is, is one that is sad, uh, that it occurred at our schools, but we're also very thrilled for the response of law enforcement and school staff. We'll take questions at this time for both Chief and myself. Where on the campus did this occur? Uh, where on the campus did this occur? Hang on a second. So this happened in, in the main concourse of the school, which runs east and west. And it occurred um, after the first lunch. So there were quite a few kids in that area when it happened. So this happened like in the hallway? Yes. Have you recovered any weapons? I'm sorry? Do you have any details about the weapon you're able to share? Um, so, so in this case, we're talking about a knife. I can't go into details of what type of knife and all those things. We're, we're still working through the evidence and, and collecting evidence. Can you describe what you mean by stable condition? Are these two students conscious? I'm, I'm obviously, um, I'm not the person to respond on their medical condition other than to say we've been reported from the hospitals that they're stable. Do you believe the student brought this knife to school? How was he able to get it here on campus? That's all part of the investigation. Yeah, we review our safety plan with law enforcement all the time. Uh, all of those things are considered law enforcement. Every single time we have an incident, we review, do an after action report, and we look at that. Um, safety of our students is obviously the top priority. The mechanisms we have in place are the ones that have been recommended by law enforcement at this time. Have you recovered the weapon, and uh, how did you identify the suspect? The SROs were, were on scene relatively quickly. Has this school had more or the average amount of yeah, I think Countryside is a, a very traditional neighborhood high school, uh, has a great community feel, and, and is normally considered a very calm and safe campus. Will this impact uh, the school for tomorrow, or is it everything back to business as usual? The school has canceled any after school activities, athletics tonight, tomorrow, they will resume school as usual. I've heard nothing of that sort yet. Certainly social media moves a, a lot faster than we're able to move, um, but as those, that information comes available, we'll, we'll actually do some additional releases when we push out the charges and things like that. Yeah, every member of this staff has undergone what's called youth mental health first aid training. It's a required training by the state and the entire staff had to have it this last year. They did. Uh, so it's looking for warning signs. It's looking for any of the things that you would suspect causes a student to act irrationally. And then how do you help them? Um, and so in this case, this staff is very well trained. It's a veteran staff. They've been at Countryside a long time and they performed outstanding today in terms of their response. Were there any reports the made the this morning to the statewide alert system uh, that would have tipped you guys off to anything happening here today? We're still looking into all that, but n not that I'm aware of. Could you give us details on the, on the lockdown and, and what happened after this all transpired with the school? Um, I can speak to the lockdown. Certainly, as I said, our primary uh, really goal in this thing is to provide for safety for everybody involved. So we want to secure them in their classrooms. We know we have a suspect in custody. We want to evaluate the potential for any other suspects, clear the, the remainder of the school, and make sure it's safe, make sure we don't have any additional evidence, anything that's harmful in the schools. And once that's complete, then we can start working on the reunification program. And you know, we have to, as I said, load buses, reach out to parents. We did that 
through our mechanisms as well as the school district's uh, communication tools. And I think that's critical is to be able to, to respond to the parents, to coordinate the reunification and the lockdown. Because what happens is, as I mentioned earlier, social media moves much faster than we're able to assimilate information and provide it. Because there may be kids in school that are reporting or live streaming right out to social media before we even have a chance to, to, to absorb any of that information. So that's how it, it flows. Safety, neutralize the threat, make sure there's no additional threats, keep everyone locked down until we determine otherwise, and they're locked down in a situation where the, the, the school's full of cops. So uh, they're exceptionally safe under, in, in that circumstance and under this circumstance once the threat was neutralized and, and he was taken into custody. I have a question for the Uh, any student who brings a weapon to campus is expelled, and so uh, Chief shared that, uh, that, that there was a weapon, so uh, the answer to that would be yes, following due process and those pieces. If I can add one thing to the lockdown, uh, the, the report from our faculty was that the students were fantastic. Uh, they behaved appropriately. They did everything they were supposed to do. The cafeteria still fed them lunch and got them, uh, you know, they were allowed to go to the restroom, all those things, so really great job by our students here at Countryside High School today. Thank you. This is the last one. Okay. How can I, parents, didn't, I didn't catch it. How, how can parents feel safe to bring their kids here tomorrow? So we have the same SROs that intervened today, and we will have some additional personnel on scene just to reassure folks that, that it's safe to come back to school. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you guys. <laughs> it's got to be a hard because the subject is big way too late. I need to drop a mic. We said we are? Yep.